Welcome to the organic chemistry section of our practice MCAT questions. In this video, we're going to be going through questions 46 to 50. So first I'll show you guys the question so you can pause the video and attempt them on your own. Here's question 46, 47, 48, 49, and 50. Now let's go through the questions together. So question 46 is saying, given the two benzaldehyde derivatives below, which one will react faster with a nucleophile? So we have two benzaldehydes. We want to know which one will react faster with a nucleophile. So that should let you know that these two things are electrophiles, but you should have known this from beforehand. You should know in organic chemistry when you have our carbonyl, that is going to most likely act as an electrophile unless we're talking about making an enolate. But in this case, this compound can only act as an electrophile because there isn't an alpha proton to turn it into an enolate. And the reason that a carbonyl is an electrophile in the first place, you have to think about that, is because there is a delta negative charge on the oxygen and a delta positive charge on the carbon. That's what makes that carbonyl carbon an electrophile because it's delta positive and then a nucleophile which has a negative charge is going to be attracted to that positive charge and it's going to react at that carbonyl carbon. So. That means that the more positive that carbonyl carbon is, the more reactive it is, the more likely it's going to react with something that's negatively charged, meaning the nucleophile. So we have to look at the main thing that's the difference between these two benzaldehyde derivatives. So both of them are aldehydes, meaning they're pretty reactive carbonyl types. But the one thing that's different is we either have this methoxy group or this fluoride group, which is attached to the other side of the benzene. And what you need to know is the fluoride is, an, so the one on the right, is a very electronegative atom, which means that that fluorine or that fluoride atom is pulling away electron density towards itself. And this electron density, this pull of electrons is kind of flowing throughout the entire system of the molecule. So it's pulling electron density away from this benzene ring, but then that also means that the benzene ring is then therefore going to be pulling electron density away a little bit from the aldehyde as well, which means that now in the carbonyl on the right, that carbonyl carbon is a lot more delta positive than if it was just a normal aldehyde. But the opposite is true for the one on the left. In that one, we have this methoxy group and it is true that oxygen is more electronegative than carbon and that it can be pulling away some electron density. But what more so happens is the effect where the lone pair of the oxygen donates into the electron system of the benzene. And then we know that in a benzene, these double bonds are moving around everywhere. And so that lone pair electron density that's pushed into the benzene is distributed around the aromatic ring. And then it's also distributed a little bit into that carbonyl carbon as well. So because on the compound on the left, we have an electron donating group, that means that the carbonyl carbon is less delta positive and therefore it doesn't need electron density as much. So it's less reactive towards nucleophiles. Whereas on the right, the fluoride is pulling away electron density because it's an electron withdrawing group. It's activating that carbonyl even more so. So we're asked which one will react faster with, an, uh, with a nucleophile. That will be the compound on the right. So option A is saying the left molecule, so we can remove that. Option B is also saying the left molecule, so let's remove that as well. Option C is saying the right molecule because the fluoral group is electron withdrawing, making its carbonyl carbon more electrophilic for addition by a nucleophile. And yes, that entire statement is correct, so we're going to choose that answer. And just to compare, option D is saying the right molecule because the fluoral group is electron donating, and that part is incorrect, making its carbonyl carbon uh, more electrophilic for addition by a nucleophile? No. If it was electron donating, then that would actually deactivate the carbonyl and make it less reactive towards nucleophiles. So that doesn't really make sense. So C is our correct answer here. In question 47, we're asked when uh, treated with a strong oxidizing agent like chromium, this chromium oxide compound, benzaldehyde will most likely produce which of the following products? So when we react with a strong oxidizing agent, benzaldehyde turns into which product? So benzaldehyde, we just covered it in the previous question, but once again, what it looks like is an aldehyde with a benzene group 
meaning that you have this benzene to the left and then we have this aldehyde. So that's what this compound looks like. We react it with an oxidizing reagent and you should know that an oxidizing reagent takes aldehydes up an oxidation level to a carboxylic acid. So that is what they take it to. So nowhere else on the compound is there going to be an oxidation taking place, not the aromatic carbons. That's nothing is really going to happen there. It's going to happen at the carbonyl carbon, and that's going to go up from an aldehyde if we react it with an oxidizing reagent to a carboxylic acid. So option A is correct, benzoic acid. That's what we call it when we have a carboxylic acid directly attached to a benzene. Option B is incorrect. It's talking about a phenyl methanol. That would be if you had a phenyl group, which looks like this, and then you had an OH like that. So that doesn't really make sense. That would be if we had a reducing reagent that reduced the aldehyde down a level to an alcohol. But that's not what's going on. We're adding an oxidizing agent. Option C is a phenyl, which looks like this. So here's option A, here's option B, here's option C. A phenyl, which is an OH directly attached to the benzene. That doesn't make sense because now we're talking about a molecule which can remove the carbon that was attached to the benzene. And so we need a different reagent for that. Oxidizing and reducing reagents, they wouldn't really do that. And finally, benzene and carbon dioxide. No, that doesn't really make sense either. That is implying that the carbon that's connected to the benzene is removed somehow and it leaves. So maybe it was turned into carboxylic acid first and then it was removed as carbon dioxide. But no, an oxidizing reagent isn't something that's strong enough that would cleave that bond and remove the carbon. It would just oxidize it up a state to the carboxylic acid and it would still be attached to the benzene. So if you know what an oxidizing reagent does, in terms of talking about carbonyls, and you should know that A is the correct answer here. In question 48, it says the catalytic hydrogenation of glycerol is most likely to produce which of the listed compounds. So glycerol, for which the structure is given right here, has undergone hydrogenation. So what hydrogenation means is that we added hydrogens. So it's essentially the same thing as reducing a compound. And so if we had added hydrogens, that means that on one of these carbons, at least one, if not all of them, an OH group should be removed and then hydrogen should be there in its place. So option A would be incorrect because of what happened here is the leftmost carbon had its oxygen oxidized. Its oxidation state went up from an alcohol to an aldehyde. And so that doesn't make sense if we're doing hydrogenation. This is oxidizing the carbon where we want to actually reduce it. Option B does make sense because right here at the end, we removed an OH and then we added a hydrogen. That makes sense. That is a hydrogenation event. Option C, same thing as with option A, it's incorrect because it oxidized up a level, so it went to a ketone. And then D, same thing. There's an oxidation state going on here that, yeah, one, two, three, First of all, the middle carbon is only bonded to three things. There should probably be another hydrogen. Essentially, it's the same oxidation level because the carbons are still attached to the same number of oxygens. But either way, we didn't add those extra hydrogens. And so it's not a hydrogenation event. In question 49, it says label each of the three circled carbons with the appropriate chirality, R, S, or not chiral. So label the, car the carbons with the correct chirality. So the first thing to note is the carbon in the middle, it is connected to two of these CH3 groups, and that means that there's a plane of symmetry, therefore this carbon is not chiral. So we can remove option D because it's assigning chirality to that middle carbon, but it does not have chirality because it's attached to two of the same group. And for carbons, you should just know that if they have four different groups attached, then they have chirality. So looking at carbon one, we're going to say that the first priority is this aldehyde. The second priority, let's look at what it's attached to. It's attached to this carbon over here, this carbon, and this carbon. So that methyl group is going to be lowest priority because all of the things that this carbon, carbon one is attached to are all carbons. But then we look at what those guys are attached to. So the next neighbor, the methyl group is attached to three hydrogens. Therefore, it is the lowest priority. The, so we're going to call it 4. 
the other two carbons of them, the one that is to the left of carbon 1 is attached to two other hydrogens, whereas the one to the right, so carbon number 2, that one has all bonds, four bonds to other carbons. So it's going to be the second highest priority. That means that this one is the third highest priority. And now when we go from first priority to the third priority, we see that we're going this way, which is clockwise. Therefore, we can say that we have R chirality for carbon 1. So that is a 1. And then we have to see for carbon 3. So R chirality, our lowest priority was in the back, which is that methyl group. So we don't have to flip the chirality that we got. We can say that carbon 1 is actually R. Carbon 2, we said there is no chirality. Now let's look at carbon 3. So carbon 3 is attached to 1, 2, 3. There would be a hydrogen over here in the back. The hydrogen is lowest priority. Other than that, it's connected to three carbons. Carbon 2 is going to be first priority because it is attached to four carbons. This one is going to be second priority. And then this one is going to be third priority. Is that correct? One, two, three. No, there's some mistake there. Let me just redo that. So we have one, two, three. We do have the hydrogen in the back. So that is number four. We're connected to carbon, carbon, carbon. This carbon is first priority because it's connected to four carbons. The carbon on the left has two hydrogens that it's attached to. This one also has two hydrogens that it's attached to. So it's a carbon over here, two hydrogens and one carbon group. Two hydrogens. Right, yeah. So we see that this group over here and then this carbon to the left both of them, they're carbons. And then we see what else they're attached to. And they're attached to two hydrogens. And then the group that's on the bottom is attached to another carbon. But then that carbon is, is attached to three um, hydrogens. Whereas for this one over here, now we're con comparing this guy and this guy. The one to the top left is actually connected to another carbon. Whereas the one at the bottom is just a methyl group. Therefore, we are going to say... that this guy over here to the left, that is priority two. This is priority three. Now when we're going from one to three, it's S and the hydrogen is in the back. Therefore, we don't have to fr flip chirality. So we have our correct answer. One is R, two is not chiral, and three is S. So the correct answer here is going to be B for this question. Now we'll move on to question 50. In question 50, we're asked about meso compounds. So what is a meso compound? It is a compound which contains at least one chiral center, but the overall molecule has a plane of symmetry. Therefore, even though it contains chiral centers, the overall molecule does not display optical activity. So option A is saying they do not contain stereocenters. That's incorrect because then it would be just some other type of molecule. It, it wouldn't be a meso compound. Meso compounds specifically contain stereocenters, but overall they have a plane of symmetry, so they, are, they don't show optical activity. Option B is saying they always contain at least one double bond. No, that's irrelevant to what's going on. They should contain at least one stereocenter, and so stereocenters doesn't really go along with a double bond. And double bond is planar, stereocenter is usually or like tetrahedral if we're talking about carbon compounds. Option C is saying they may only contain a single chiral center. You should have at least two chiral centers and that allows the overall molecule to have a plane of symmetry. If you just have one chiral center then if the chiral center has a plane of symmetry it's no longer a chiral center but if it has 
chirality, then the overall molecule will have chirality if there's only one chiral center. But if there are two chiral centers and individually they're both chiral centers, if we just look at the centers themselves, there's no plane symmetry. But when we look at the molecule together and look at at least two chiral centers, then there may be a plane of symmetry. Therefore, we should have at least two chiral centers. And so D is correct. They never have optical activity because that is the definition of a meso compound. That's it for the questions in this video. If you enjoyed what you saw, make sure to check out our course. The link is in the description below. In that course, we go through a lot more questions just like this video, and we explain all the different answer options, explaining why each option is correct or incorrect. Other than that, make sure to subscribe to this channel so that you can see all the videos that we post here. That's it for this video. I'll see you.